No children or scares allowed. Hey guys, it's Phoebe with Watch Mojo. Today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 R-rated horror movies that are not scary. You all are gonna leave right now! Ma'am, you don't understand. There's something happening in a few states. In this region, it's not safe. Leave now! We're taking a look at horror movies that scored an R rating despite their non-scary nature. Let's get to it. Number 10, The Gallows. A found footage supernatural slasher set in a high school theater. To death by hanging on this 29th day. Sounds intriguing enough, but The Gallows was anything but novel. Derivative, contrived, and most importantly, not frightening, the film fell flat with both critics and audiences. It was a box office success, but only because its budget was a minuscule $100,000. Cassidy, just come over. Cassidy, Cassidy! Leaning on jump scares that failed to actually scare, The Gallows was described by critics as a cliche, predictable, and incredibly dumb. It's difficult to be scared when the movie is so bad that you're barely watching the screen. Number 9. Deadly Friend How did a horror master like Wes Craven go from a nightmare on Elm Street to a stalker movie starring a twisted version of Short Circuit's Johnny Five? Let's go. Come on, out of the van. <laughs> to be fair, Deadly Friend can't be entirely blamed on the legendary director, as Warner Brothers forced Craven to replace much of the original story with gory death scenes in a film that originally had none. <laughs> The end result is a shockingly misguided train wreck that was critically panned and works better as an unintentional comedy than as a horror movie. Careful, it'll hurt you. Ooh, this garbage can. <laughs> Number eight, The Happening. I'm gonna give you a math riddle, okay? And you're gonna tell me the answer. Leading up to its release, M. Night Shyamalan compared his film The Happening to Alfred Hitchcock's The Birds. The director later changed his tune, however, labeling The Happening as a B-movie. Take a wild guess at which description was the most accurate. I hear you whispering, planning on stealing something. No, ma'am, we're not. Plan on murdering me in my sleep. What? No. Despite being built up as Shyamalan's first R-rated movie, The Happening squandered its potential on comical death scenes and a central threat that is about as terrifying as a field of daisies. Please tell us what to do! I need a second, okay? Why can't anybody give me a goddamn second? Still, if you're a fan of movies that are so bad they're good, we totally recommend watching Shyamalan's accidental comedic masterpiece. We have to go. We have to protect Jess. Got the three to get off our porch! Number 7, Texas Chainsaw 3D. Ah, those good old days when tired franchises slapped a 3D to a title and called it a day. In a baffling move that continues to defy common sense, Texas Chainsaw thought what fans really wanted to see was a domesticated Leatherface who's part villain and part anti hero. We rallied the boys, we torched that place to the ground. In this, finish what we started years ago. Not this time. Not on my watch. 1974's The Texas Chainsaw Massacre is a tough act to follow, but this sequel fails as a horror movie even when not measured up to the lofty standard set by the original. <laughs> About as generic as slasher films come, Texas Chainsaw is best enjoyed as a parody of the franchise. Number 6, Halloween Resurrection. Creating compelling horror sequels is an uphill battle, as fear and the unknown are practically inseparable. While 2018's Halloween pulled it off with panache, 2002's Halloween Resurrection showed just how badly awry a horror sequel can go. Hey, relax. I think this is going really well. Really, baby? Yes! We are doing our thing. Okay. The entertainment. Featuring a fight scene between the serial killer and Busta Rhymes, this tension-free abomination is a far cry from John Carpenter's 1978 classic. Boring and goofy instead of scary, it's only gotten worse with age. Fans of the series should watch Laurie Strode's opening sequence and then pretend Halloween Resurrection is only a short film. I'll see you in hell.
Number 5. Book of Shadows, Blair Witch 2 Cash Grab the Movie would have been a more honest title. You touch me again, and I will rip out your goddamn throat. <sighs> Keep your mother fing change. Despite being made on a shoestring budget, 1999's The Blair Witch Project was a huge commercial hit, so the studio quickly developed a sequel to try and double its earnings. Instead of a found footage movie, Book of Shadows was an analysis of mass hysteria, following people who believed that The Blair Witch Project was a documentary. Get out of these woods and go home! There is no goddamn Blair Witch! With a setup like that, the film could have been something special, but the execution was beyond laughable. Chaotic and clearly rushed, the sequel squandered the potential of the original. Number 4. I Know What You Did Last Summer Written by Kevin Williamson, who also penned 1996's Scream. Stu's flipped out. He's gone mad. We all go a little mad sometimes. <laughs> no, Billy! This slasher film adheres to many of the cliches that were deconstructed in Wes Craven's movie. It's a revenge tale with a solid cast and a cool central concept that might have been better suited for drama than horror. Watch that! I Know What You Did Last Summer is a bit too formulaic to hold much in the way of scares or surprises, but the bloody death scenes are fun enough to keep things interesting. Putting aside all the gore, I Know What You Did Last Summer works as a character study of four guilt-ridden friends. Please, it was an accident. I knew all about accidents. And let me give you some advice. When you leave a man for dead, make sure he's really dead. Number 3. House of Wax A remake of the 1953 classic in name only, this teen slasher film is competently made but seldom strives to offer anything more than mild distraction. Can you turn off your lights, please? Okay, this is getting kind of creepy. Boasting Paris Hilton's best performance, which isn't saying anything, House of Wax replaces the original's chilling atmosphere with occasionally creative kills, but the hammy acting and paper-thin characters ensure that any tension is fleeting. Unless someone is a huge fan of the Vincent Price film, House of Wax is unlikely to enrage anyone. However, the odds of actually experiencing a genuine scare are even lower. <laughs> Number 2. Jason X With each new Friday the 13th straying further and further away from Jason's glory days, the 10th entry stopped caring altogether and just went full stupid. Cam! That, uh... That didn't go so well. Set in the future and in space, Jason X seems unsure about whether to be a traditional slasher fic or to lampoon the absurd lengths explored by the franchise. As a result, the film falls short of being either one of them. By this point, Jason Voorhees is too recognizable of a villain to be scary, so Jason X doubles down on the silliness and graphic violence. Oh, this sucks on so many levels! Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. House of the Dead Directed by Uwe Boll and based on a video game, House of the Dead is frightening for all the wrong reasons. You're not the sharpest tool in the shed, are you? I said shove off. Or don't you spreck into English? Ugly, incoherent, and funnier than most intentional comedies, House of the Dead garnered universal disdain from critics and cannot even boast of being a commercial success. What the hell was that thing? Our best friend. Not anymore. Wasting most of its $12 million budget on bland sets and dull shootouts, the R rating just meant the makeup team could get a bit creative with the zombies. <laughs> The scariest thing about House of the Dead is the fact that it scored a sequel. These movies are so not scary that even I could watch them. And I don't do horror. 
But what do you guys think of our list? Let us know in the comments or tweet me at Phoebe underscore WM. And check out this video.